Welcome to another edition of Florida Newsmakers. I'm Tramel Gomes with our very special guest, Lily Kopp, the director of the Florida Head Start Collaboration Office. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you very now much. there are about 21 Head Start programs around the nation on an October 1st funding schedule. And now these are programs that serve families at or below the federal poverty level. Now what's happening? I, I hear they're stuck between the stalemate in Washington. Explain. Yes, they are. Uh, Head Start uh, grantees are funded at different times during the year. Um, it just so happens that there are 21 grantees that are funded from October 1, and because there isn't a budget uh, that has been created by Congress, then they do not have an award letter, and they some of them are, have been forced to close their doors. So what does that mean? What's happening here in Florida? Well, in, in Florida, we have eight programs that have a 10-1 or an October 1 start date. And uh, depending upon how deep their pockets are or the agency in which they are funded through, um, uh, some of them have been able to stay open, but some of them have been forced to close their doors. For example, here in the Big Bend area, Capital Area Community Action Agency, which is a three-county program here in this area, was forced to close their doors on Tuesday. Um, we have uh, two other programs that one is staying open until the end of the week, and then another program will be closing the end of next week. The other four have uh, additional funds that they've been able to secure through their agency uh, or their funding source to keep them open for um, maybe another month or so. So how many kids are being affected here in Florida? In Florida, nearly 10,000 children will be affected by the, uh, the shutdown. Uh, if everyone is forced to close their doors here eventually. Right now, we're looking at probably about 2,000 of that uh, 10,000. Now, hearing that these programs are closing their doors, what does that mean to the families? How are they getting by? What are you hearing from, um, from the people who depend on your services? Well, that, that's the, the tragic part of, of this, is that, uh, as you mentioned, we work with families that uh, are, in order to qualify for Head Start, have to have incomes that are at or below federal poverty. For example, for a family of four, they can make no more than $23,550. And many depend on child care and the supports that Head Start provides um, in order to work and pay their rent and, and so forth. So Head Start provides a lot for their family. The children get early education and care. We're, we provide um, food services to the nutritional services to the child. We monitor their health. We um, take them to the dentist and make sure that they're getting dental exams. And uh, so it's very comprehensive, the services that we provide. And uh, so those families that uh, will uh, not be able to provide, have those services of Head Start will, will be missing out. And the children, most of all, will be missing out. Now, this isn't the first blow to your organizations. You guys are in the midst of recovering or adjusting to the latest hit from the federal sequester. Where are things now? Exactly, yes. Um, we, we're, we're beginning to adjust uh, Head Start programs. We're part of the sequester. They lost 5.27% of their funding. Some programs uh, chose to reduce the number of children that they were serving. Some programs did not want to have that impact on the families and chose to make other adjustments, maybe furloughing staff, reducing their hours, just so that they could keep the high quality services available for our most neediest families. So this is really having a huge impact, not only on the families, but on the staff as well. And, uh, and if a family ha can't go to work, uh, or can't, don't have childcare, then they can't go to work. And, and uh, that is going to impact our economy as well. For those who are watching this in that situation and wondering what they can do to get by or get some emergency services for their child if they have to go to work, what are you offering? What's, what's out there? Well, the, the programs have, uh, excuse me, the, the uh, families have been guided to go to their local early learning coalitions. Um, those are, those provide uh, other federal and state funded child care 
funds um, to um, families who qualify. So those families have been instructed to get on their lists, but they too have waiting lists as well. And so um, they may not be able to receive immediate services, unfortunately. All right. um, so it's, it's been, it's been a, a tragedy for a number of reasons. So what's next for those who are wondering what will happen to their service and how they can get back um, to status quo? Well, we hope that there will be a resolution soon um, from Congress that they will be able to work it out and we will have a budget. Um, uh, if, if that doesn't happen, uh, the program may be forced to close their doors and staff will be forced to find additional work. And that's a shame because Head Start is really uh, invested in the education and the training of staff. And people really like their jobs when they, they work for Head Start. And we don't want to lose them. And we don't want to force um, the families to find alternative care or maybe substandard unsafe care for their children. That's our fear. Well, Lily Cobb, Director of the Florida Head Start Collaboration Office, thank you so much for joining us and bringing us all of that information. And to our viewers, we'll catch you next time.